Today is Saturday, June 3rd. Surveys show three-quarters of Americans plan to clean their homes every spring. But what about our online spaces? In today's world, they can feel just as messy. So today, Lisa McCarg is here to geek out with us about decluttering our digital lives. She is a digital organization expert who guides business owners on how to take control of their digital chaos and create systems to keep their operations organized and focus on what they love. Lisa McCarg will explain her approach and share her top tips for organizing everything from our email inboxes to our photos and apps. We even talk about that unruly downloads folder. Plus, what to do if you feel overwhelmed by even the thought of all of this. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy Special Edition Saturday, when we sit down with a different expert or celebrity every Saturday to talk about something in the news. Don't forget to tune in every Monday through Friday for our regular episodes, where we provide all the day's news in 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. It's now time for today's Special Edition Saturday. Lisa, thank you so much for coming on the Newsworthy. Thank you for having me, Erica. I'm really excited to be here and to talk about digital organizing with you. So many of us have, you know, seemingly countless files, photos, apps, the list goes on, on various digital devices. So first, why do you think it's important to declutter our digital spaces? And what's your advice for people who feel like it is just so overwhelming? Your brain does not distinguish between whether your actual desk is cluttered with papers and physical items or if it's just your computer desktop that's really cluttered. Your brain interprets all of that as visual clutter and reacts accordingly. And it usually reacts with stress. So all of these digital spaces, your you know, Google Drive, your computer desktop, your Dropbox, your digital photos, you know, if you work in Canva and make a lot of images, all of those are subtly stressing you out and putting you in this constant sense of like fight or flight mode, um, which we know the long-term effects of that are not good. Even though we like to think we can just like minimize the screen or turn it off, the effects are really staggering. And that's not even talking about, you know, the time and energy that it costs us as well. So there's a mental, maybe even a physical effect. And you probably can't find your items, I would imagine. Yeah. And when you can't find the resource you need, it's really stressful. It's really frustrating. And the effects of that just kind of like roll downhill and end up affecting everything else from the way you're interacting with other people to the energy you bring to things like a podcast interview or, you know, a speaking engagement or interacting with your team. So let's talk about what decluttering our devices actually means. Can you explain your approach and how it works? When it comes to digital declutter, I like to keep it really simple. It's about small, consistent steps. Because if we're talking about email, for example, um, I had a client, she'd had the same email address since at least 2006. So, you know, when we're looking at almost two decades of emails, that's a lot to get through, and you're not going to get through it in one day. But if you can commit to, you know, I'm going to take five or ten minutes a day to, you know, start going through and decluttering my email, those small, consistent steps are going to add up, and it's going to be sustainable. You're not going to get burned out. You're not going to hit decision fatigue. And the hope, I imagine, is once you've tackled the past stuff, you can then move forward in a way that's not going to leave you overwhelmed again. Exactly. So I like to really approach it by creating a system first to manage all the new emails or the new files you're creating, whatever it is, so that you're not adding to, you know, this kind of mess that we need to untangle. Because the other thing is, if you sit down to declutter, what's going to happen is you're going to find a file and be like, oh my gosh, this is really important, but shoot, what should I name it? Or where do I save it? Or do I really need this? If we haven't created a structure first, you're going to get overwhelmed by, you know, the first files you try to deal with because you don't know what to do with them. So I want to talk about some of your top tips for each kind of category of our digital lives. We've talked a little bit about email already. Maybe give us one more tip for email or, you know, what are the folders and filters? What's an example of the first thing you might create? I think the first thing a lot of people don't realize is your inbox 
is not meant to hold all of your emails. Um, My inbox contains things that I need for the near future. So for example, emails about um, this podcast, they're in my inbox. And after, you know, we wrap up this recording, I'm going to go delete the ones I don't need and file some of the other ones away. Archive or delete? I tell people, delete if you can. And if you're scared and you're like, oh gosh, but I might need this, put it in a folder or archive it because then it's out of your inbox, it's out of the way, and it is still searchable. So if I need to find that email from Erica about the podcast, I can still search, you know, the email address or, you know, the newsworthy podcast and I can find it. And it's not in the way, it's not in my inbox. How about... Uh, our smartphones. I like to consolidate the apps into folders because it makes it less cluttered. It also allows me to be a little more focused. Um, so if I'm on my phone for business, I, I have a folder with kind of all my business apps, you know, with Slack and Instagram, because I really use Instagram for business mostly. I have a folder for like entertainment that has, you know, streaming stuff in it. So it's all contained. I have one with all the Google apps. I have a folder called Stuff I Don't Use, and it's the apps that my phone won't let me delete, but I never use them, and I don't need them taking up space. I have another one called Dumb Adult Stuff, and it has, like, you know, the apps for, like, my doctor's office and insurance stuff. I think there is this notion that, you know, online space has to be very professional is the right way. Like, no, you can have fun with it. Our pictures can be the most emotional items on our devices, so we want to make sure they're saved in easy-to-find places. Still ahead, Lisa McCarg lays out her system for organizing photos, plus why renaming files is so important, and what to do with those physical electronics you no longer use, like an old phone or laptop. All that and more coming up. But first, a quick break for our sponsors. Some habits can be hard to stick to, but have you ever had the ones that you start to crave because they just make you feel better? That's what AG1 from Athletic Greens has become for me. I wanted boosted energy, better gut health, and a way to get a wide variety of nutrients. And now I get all of that with AG1. In fact, it now feels like an easy little something that I do just for myself each morning. It's one scoop of powder mixed with water. I also like to put in ice and a splash of lemon juice. And very quickly, I noticed that it helps me with improved digestion, morning hydration, and just an overall feeling that I'm ready to start the day. AG1 is made from 75 of the highest quality whole food sourced ingredients from around the world, intentionally curated for their ability to nourish all of the body's systems in harmony. So if you are looking for a simpler and cost-effective supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash newsworthy. That's athleticgreens.com slash newsworthy. Check it out. And thanks to our other sponsor, ZocDoc. Finding a great doctor you trust can be tricky. There's the doctor's skill set and personality to consider, then the question of whether or not they take your insurance, and when you can actually get in for an appointment. If all of that stresses you out sometimes, like it does me whenever I need to find a new doctor, then check out the tool called ZocDoc. It's designed to make the whole search process a whole lot simpler. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. No more wasting time calling around so many different doctor's offices only to find out that they don't take your insurance or can't get you in for another six months. ZocDoc is set up to help you find quality doctors and avoid all the surprises or unexpected issues along the way. Millions of people use ZocDoc to find the right doctor for them. So go to ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C, ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy. ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to our conversation. I know I can speak from experience that the number of pictures on our smart devices like our iPhones really get out of hand quickly. So how do you recommend organizing all of those photos? If you take a lot of photos on your phone, I offload my photos into a paid Dropbox account that has a ton of storage. So at the end of every month, I go, I select all the photos from the current month, and I have them upload directly from my phone into Dropbox, and then I delete them from my phone unless there's a photo I really, really love. You know, I'll keep a few. 
I organize my photos within Dropbox. I have a folder that says, for example, let's go back to 2022. It says 2022. And then inside of that, there's a folder that says January 2022. There's another one, February 2022, so on and so forth. And that's where I dump them. Setting that all up at first took some time. It wasn't fun because I had a big backlog of photos I had to do. But now at the end of every month, I have a little reminder pop up. I'm like, oh yeah, let me go dump my photos. And then at the end of the year, when I actually make like a photo book that I have printed, it's really easy to do because everything's separated by month. And if there's some special vacation, like um, I went to Ireland in September, well, guess what? In September of 2022, there's a folder that says, you know, Ireland. So all of those are kind of subdivided. Or, you know, if you have a really special anniversary or birthday party, you can subdivide that into a folder as well. But the key thing, again, is having a system. I do mine chronologically for photos and then having the habit and system to maintain it. I love that. And I think I saw something on your Instagram, too, about like searching the word screenshot and then deleting all of those on your phone. That's a good tip. Yeah. So you can actually search a lot of stuff. You can type in like recipe and it'll like kind of search for pictures what of what it thinks is a recipe. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. And I just want to briefly ask, I know we could talk about this stuff forever, um, uh, going back to your computer, the downloads folder. I know for me, that's one that gets out of hand quickly. Your downloads folder, it's a temporary holding ground. Nothing is meant to stay or be stored in your downloads folder because it's it's just sort of this default place where things go. I am now in the habit at the end of a work session, I will open my downloads folder and I'll look, I'll be like, okay, it's kind of check like, yep, that upload, it's definitely, you know, been uploaded to the um, platform it's going to be in and it's good. So I can delete that recording. Yeah, yeah, all those images have been uploaded. I will go through and just delete everything that was in the downloads folder. And if I actually need it, I'm going to drag it out of downloads and I'm going to store it in the folder it's meant to go in. Rename your files so that they make sense to you. What about physical devices? What should people be doing with their old electronics that they no longer use but have a lot of data on them? I always encourage people, if at all possible, avoid storing things just on a hard drive. So like my laptop that I have I don't have a whole lot of stuff stored on that hard drive. Pretty much everything is in the cloud. So when my computer dies or, you know, if a little kiddo like knocks it over, cracks it and it's totally destroyed, you haven't lost everything. I've worked with photographers who use external hard drives as well to back stuff up. You really just don't want things only in one place. Um, and the second thing is looking for a place that will responsibly recycle those materials. The amount of what's usually called e-waste, like our old cell phones, computers, tablets, all of this is just staggering. So doing your best to find a local electronic um, recycler to responsibly recycle these things. And a lot of times those places will also have services where they will like wipe a hard drive for you and they'll securely dispose of those as well. What's your just final advice for someone who wants to get decluttered on, you know, on all of their devices, but is feeling fear or overwhelm? What's that final thought for them? Digital clutter and the weight of all of it, you might think it doesn't really bother you, but there is a real cost in terms of, you know, just the mental cognitive load that it uses up, as well as, you know, time and energy and distraction. Don't think you're going to tackle it all at once. Nobody declutters, you know, a house all at once. You start with one area at a time. If you're really overwhelmed, you have a lot. Don't start with like the photos of your children when they were babies. That's going to be really hard and like emotionally draining for you to go through. Um, start with something easier, like one folder in your Google Drive. So take these really big tasks and break it down into small, sustainable pieces. And that's how you're going to tackle it. Otherwise, it is just going to be way too overwhelming. Well, thank you to Lisa McCarg for sharing such great actionable advice. 
For more of her tips and resources about all of this, check out her website, lisamch.com, and be sure to find her on Instagram at lisajmch. And of course, if you found the episode interesting or helpful, we always appreciate it if you share the link with a friend who might also enjoy it or benefit. And if you're not already, hit that follow button in your podcast app so you can easily find all of our new episodes, including our signature fast, fair, fun 10-minute news roundups available every weekday morning to help you start each day in the know. All right, we'll be back on Monday with your next regular 10-minute news roundup. Until then, have a great weekend.